Hi, this is Neil from UseMyFrame.com. Welcome to another video in the Mastering the Lens Meter 101 series. I'll be showing you on the Marco 101, but the things that we cover today will be applicable to any, usually any manual lens meter. And uh, today we're going to cover the Sphero Cylinder lenses and how to spot them, as well as some common mistakes to avoid. So without making a big intro, let's just dive right into it. Here we go. So just for comparison purposes, I brought a few lenses that we can use to test and to learn how to spot sphero cylinder lenses. Lenses that have no cylinder are just called spherical. Lenses that have cylinder are sphero cylinder. So if you ever hear that name or that word and you're not sure what it means, all it means is a lens that has a cylinder power. Okay, so this is our only sphere that I brought uh, or that I took out. This one will be the uh, one that we'll kind of mainly use to be easy to see. I got a quarter cylinder because these are the ones that are most common for mistakes to be made on there. So I'll show you some tricks on how to do those. And then I brought a high power cylinder one uh, just to see how that works because these can be sometimes tricky too. Now, all of these lenses are written in minus cylinder. So you, depending on what lens company you stock lenses with um, or receive your orders through, Sometimes they'll be written in plus cylinder, and that can be confusing. So I thought before we read sphero cylinder lenses, let's take a quick look at sphero, how to read sphero cylinder lens packages. Okay, so this is in the minus cylinder here in the United States. This is the most common method of how we, um, you know, even if a, a prescription is written in plus cylinder from the eye doctor, most lab programs are going to flip it to minus. And all that means is, uh, so say this one is a minus one sphere with a minus one cylinder. If it did have a, wait, let me see, did it in the back? No. Sometimes they write the powers on the back too, but to convert this to plus cylinder, it's very easy. Add the sphere or add the cylinder to the sphere. So in this case, a minus one plus a minus one is minus two. Sorry for it being so sloppy. And the cylinder just gets flipped to the opposite sign. So instead of a minus one, now it's going to be a plus one. So if you were to use this exact same lens, this one happens to be by Somo. But if you grab maybe a Vision Ease or a Younger or whoever it is, Essler, you may see it in both. It might have on the top a minus one, minus one, like this one is, or it may have both, or it may even have just this one if you're in Europe. So, but to convert them is easy to see between the two. And I even got some over here just to show you that have both on there and how that works. Okay, so we got our minus cylinder is, so in, and that's important, too, because that can be a mistake people make is they look at the wrong number and they look at the wrong uh, sphere power. On accident, they end up pulling the wrong lens, thinking they got the right one when they don't. Uh, hopefully, you're using an LMS that will check that so you won't have to worry about it actually going through and wasting a lens. But... Um, to read the difference between the two is very easy. And so you see this one, we have a minus 50 cylinder and a plus four sphere. Remember what I showed you earlier, to convert it to a plus cylinder, we just add the negative 50 to the positive four. So in which case that would be a plus 350. And then our cylinder just changes to the opposite sign, stays the same value. So from a minus 50 to a plus 50, and it's the same thing. If we were to add the plus 50 to the 350, we would get a four, flip it to the opposite sign for our cylinder, and we get a minus 50. So really easy to convert, sometimes a little confusing at first. Um, when it comes to spotting the power, uh, this is called transposing. 
going, uh, converting it between plus and minus cylinder. Uh, when it has a, uh, an access for a written prescription, the process is called transposing. And, uh, and it's virtually the same thing, except because there's an access, if the access is minus, if the axis is less than 90 degrees, you would add 90 to the new axis. And if it's, if the axis is over 90, you would subtract 90. That's an easy way of thinking of it. Uh, I remember studying for the ABO and I got kind of confused, but, um, that's something I could probably cover separately in a separate video, but to get us started uh here's another one so i cover those up and we look at a minus 175 minus 50 to get our to convert this into plus power what do we got to do we got to add our cylinder to our sphere so a minus 50 plus a minus 175 becomes our new sphere power hopefully you're going to get what it should be before i take my thumb off of it so if you said a minus 225, you'd be right. What would be our cylinder? It'd be a plus 50. Okay, I hope that makes sense because it all, uh, it's, you know, the fundamentals of the optics world and everything in that will apply to what we learn on the lens meter. Okay, so let's go there and we'll start learning how to spot lenses. All right, I have my main camera set to look through the eyepiece of the lens meter. And this way, um, not using any diagrams or on paper or whiteboards, but you can see exactly what it looks like when you're looking through a lens meter. So you can see what I see. I just think that'll be more accurate than trying to use some sort of a diagram to explain it. Also, it will make more sense when you get in front of your lens meter, um, what to see, what to look for, things like that. So uh, you may be watching this, seeing this video for the first time and you're at home or wherever, but definitely use this video and this series when you're in front of a lens meter that you can practice on. You know, get the same lenses that I used in the beginning so you can follow along um, and it, it'll really accelerate your learning more than any diagrams could ever do. All right, first thing I wanna cover is going vertically are three skinny lines that you can see on this, um, on my target here, right? Now, there are three skinny lines going vertically those are our sphere lines, and there are three fatter lines going horizontally that are our cylinder. Right now, there's no power in here, and no lens in here, or if we put a plane of lens in there, it would look the same. So because our sphere and our cylinder power are the same, they are both coming into focus the same amount, right? That's why we see both sets of these lines. And I have this, my axis wheel set to zero, but if I set it to 90, you'll see the same thing, except my sphere lines are now going horizontally and the cylinder lines are going vertically. So just remember the sphere is skinny, cylinder is fat, right? And it's an easy way of memorizing that. And it's important because it'll help you reduce the likelihood of mistakes further down the line. All right, I'm gonna be using the left side of my power wheel uh, instead of putting my hand in the way of the other camera so you don't see it, okay? This way you're not you know, having to look over my hand, but you can follow along with what power it reads. Now, um, let's put our first lens in and I'm going to just lock this in because these cameras are in the way and I can't really get in there the way I'd like to, but that's okay. So I have my lens in and of course it's blurry. I'm going, whenever you're spotting a lens and your lab is accustomed to minus power or minus cylinder work tickets, always get in the habit of starting high in the plus and slowly turning the power drum away to you until 
your lens comes into focus, okay? If you're in Europe and your lab tickets all read plus power, you're gonna wanna do the opposite. But the point of this is for consistency. So anytime you read a spheral cylinder lens, in your mind, you should know right away that if you are turning the power drum away from you and you see your sphere lines, the skinny lines come into focus, you are spotting wrong, right? And that's a, it, the more you use it and get, you know, kind of watch for it, the more it'll get ingrained and the less likely you will be to make a mistake. All right, so I'm starting high in a plus. I'm working my way down. There is, of course, no prescribed axis for this lens. It's just a minus one, minus one. We could literally set our axis for anything. Right now, we're just looking at how to read it. In a minute, I'll show what to do when there is a prescribed axis and to set the wheel and so on. But for right now, we've just got our lens in there. We got it somewhat centered, our target in the reticle, and now I'm going to move my axis wheel, oops, to make those three skinny lines straight and unbroken. You see how that looks? Let me see if I can get this into a little bit sharper focus. Right about there. Okay. And I'm looking at the power drum camera that I have, and it looks like it's right on, which is good. So, because I'm not looking straight through the eyepiece, I'm looking through a camera, which can uh, make things a little different. So, I, I see my three skinny lines, which are my sphere lines, and I am at my sphere power, right? It's at a minus one. This lens is a minus one, minus one. And here's my sphere lines at minus one, just like they should be. Now, a common mistake when people see a... Caleb, that's enough. Caleb. Sorry. <laughs> I brought my dog in with me. A, a common mistake is to think that when we look for the cylinder, that we should go to like, a, if it's a minus one cylinder, it should look, at, we should dial in our power drum as a minus one, but that's not really true. We're going to find our cylinder. My, if our sphere is a minus one, we're going to find our cylinder another minus one away from that. Okay. So our sphere is at a minus one. We keep slowly turning away. And now we're seeing our cylinder lines. And there they are in nice sharp focus. And there it is. We're at a minus two. And that's how we would spot a lens and what to look for and what our cylinder should come in at, right? And this especially changes when it's a, say like a positive sphere with the negative cylinder, right? Sometimes that can really throw people off and we'll go through some examples of those too. So this is real easy. Now, when we go to spot this, we wanna make sure that um, our, the, the, what, the key point that matters is the center line of the sphere. So that skinny middle line and where that intersects with the fat cylinder line. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. Okay. So that would be considered centered. It's very easy to make the mistake of getting so focused on your sphere lines that you end up messing up one way or another, whether it's your sphere or your cylinder, thinking that you're in the center when you're definitely not. You see, you would be actually putting about one diopter of prism into this lens if you were to spot it right here. So your lens must be centered for the cylinder line and the spherical line. Okay, and as we go through and cover prism, 
we'll cover that more in depth as well. All right, but there is our cylinder is right in the center. Our sphere is right in the center. When we get to strong cylinder, it is not uncommon to have to rock the power drum back and forth, back and forth, while slowly moving these in. Because some uh, cylinder powers can be very high. And you see how when we're looking at the sphere lines right now, we can kind of see our cylinder lines in the background. Well, when the cylinder gets very strong, you won't even see them at all. You'll only see the sphere lines. And you're kind of blind when you're first putting it in. You're only seeing the sphere lines, and it's easy to be way off. And then you dial the power drum away from you, bring your cylinder in, spot the lens. Well, what you didn't realize was you ended up moving your sphere, and now you're going to get imbalance between the two. Okay? So that's a really important tip to pay attention to. You always want to rock it back and forth to make sure... Your sphere lines are centered and unbroken, and your cylinder is centered and unbroken. Then, if and if you're at the right, correct axis, that is how you would spot the lens. You're good to go. All right. Now that's with us knowing the power of that lens. Let's do. Let's do this one. How do we read? Let me put this back to zero. Okay. Now I have this lens that you don't know what it is. And what we are going to do is read the power of this lens. Remember how we showed to... Um, grab this one real quick. Let me toss it in. We want to read the power of this lens. What we do, we go high on the plus. We start working our way down. When our target is clear and sharp, we read the power that we have, and we're at a minus one, and that's the power of this lens. There is no cylinder, so both sphere lines and cylinder lines are in focus. So those are easy to read. Now let's read this mystery lens. And I want, I'm going to re remember that our cylinder um, is not, is different than the total power. Okay? So the cylinder is the difference between our sphere reading and the total power that we come to. Right, so when our sphere was a minus one, our cylinder was a minus one, we came into focus as a minus two when we came into our cylinder. Come on. So our mystery lens is in there, and I'm going to, as I bring down the power, uh, of the power drum, the sphere lines are going to slowly come into focus, and then the cylinder lines will slowly come into focus. And I want to see, try and see, this is an exercise, if you can determine what the power of this lens is as written on the lens package, okay? And remember, this is your clue that the cylinder is not the total power of the lens, Right, so when we did the minus one sphere, minus one cylinder, the sphere lines came in at a minus one, but our cylinder lines came in not also as a minus one, even though it had a minus one cylinder, it had a, it came in at a minus two. So it was the difference, the cylinder was the difference between what our sphere power was and what our total power was when we brought it in to get our cylinder lines to show, okay? It was the difference between the two, okay? I'm gonna slowly turn this away. I will fix the axis wheel. And uh, just a side note, I 
One of the reasons I absolutely love the Marco 101 as opposed to the BNL or some of the other ones is you can rotate you can rotate the power drum and dial in the axis at the same time when you're final inspecting and it is so much faster. I love this. I love this lens meter. So all right, sorry about that. So here is our sphere lines. So uh make sure to write that down. And now I will slowly turn it away to find our cylinder lines. Right about there, it looks the sharpest. Remember that uh, your stock lenses or finished lenses come in quarters. So you won't find them, you know, a minus 1.12. You know, even though it may read that, because sometimes they are off, we find that. But uh, when they're packaged, uh, you know, 99% of the time, they're going to be in quarter diopters. 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1, and so on. All right, so there is our cylinder power. So what is the power of this lens? Did you say for the sphere power, which this one was pretty easy, did you say our sphere power was a minus 175? If you did, you got it right. Now the real challenge is, what did you put for the cylinder? Did you put a cylinder power of minus 2.25? It does read that, but that's our total power. And remember, our cylinder is going to be the difference between our total power and our sphere power. So if you put a sphere of minus 175, a cylinder of minus 50, you got it right. Great job. All right, and I hope, I really, really hope you did. If you did, you are learning and you're doing so very well. Okay, I'm going to take this lens out. And let me put that back in there just so I don't get these lenses mixed up. I brought a couple more that I didn't have in the beginning, so this will be a total, uh, a total surprise. You will not know what these are, and it's going to be a small step forward, okay, in far as difficulty. What is the power of this lens? And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'll put this in there. Roughly centered. Remember, always go high in the plus. Work your way down. It's not in the center of my target right now. That's okay. We're just reading the power. I'll slowly, as I, you know, normally I would be holding the lens with my left hand, dialing the power drum down with my right, and kind of fine-tuning both. Moving the lens down or over to get it centered all at the same time. I can't do that right now because of how the or how the cameras are situated. So let me move this one. It should be about in the center. We'll worry more about the center once we actually start spotting lenses. Right now, we are just reading the lenses, right? And making sure that we know this is great because this way you'll be able to know and determine whether the power is off, whether it's a stock lens or your um, checking surface lenses as well as when it comes to final inspection all right so here we have our sphere power fix these lines just a hair there we go that's nice and straight so write down our sphere power and I am going to on this one I'm going to just keep slowly turning the power drum away. I'm not going to stop on it like I did last time. That's just too easy. We're going to really test and see if you get it right. I'm going to just keep turning away and you make a note, whether write it down or a mental note uh, as to what it is. And then we're going to double check and see if you get the correct lens power for this lens. Okay. I'm going to go high into plus. I'm going to work my way down. And 
now I'm going back blurry. All right, now the test for you, what is the power of this lens? Write it down, make a mental note so you remember, and now I'm gonna walk our walk back through this, just for those who may have gotten this wrong, to at least get the correct answer. And for those that got it right, well, you already know. So our sphere power came in nice and sharp at a plus two, which is right. When we turned away and kept going, our cylinder lines came into focus, sharp focus, right about here. And they started getting blurry, right? So right about here is where they're sharp, sharpest. It's the difference. Our cylinder is not a plus one, right? Even though that's where it ended up. Our cylinder is a minus one. And here's the lens. It was a plus two, minus one. And it makes sense because when we subtracted one, the difference of our cylinder, that's where we ended up on that positive one. And it's the difference between the two, not where it ends up at. Okay, that's what always trips people up. All right, the last one that I'm gonna do in this little test is going to be probably the most difficult one yet. So if you're getting them all right, you're doing great and I hope you're encouraged. If you're getting them wrong, don't worry about it. Just stick with it. Keep practicing, watch, go through these videos again. Keep going through them over and over. It will click. Uh, you can also feel free, drop comments uh, below. I always respond to them. Um, as well as we got a pretty good community of others that uh, answer the questions too. Okay, so I'm going to do the same exact thing. Wow, look at that. I put it in there and it lined up the cylinder almost perfectly. Boy, I couldn't have done that again if I wanted to. Huh. That's amazing, actually. Okay, so our sphere lines are in focus. Uh, oh, I forgot. I'm gonna just do the exact same thing I did last time, okay? I'm gonna start high in the plus like this. I'm gonna work my way down and go all the way through past the cylinder. Let's see if you can determine the correct lens power from the fundamentals of what we did prior to this, okay? Here we go. All right, now with practice, you can actually start doing this extremely fast. Um, maybe not as fast as some of the auto lens meters, uh, which are a really great uh, tool in our in the you know in the lab or in the dispensary. Um, but boy, I tell you, you can with a little practice, you can really start getting really good with this. So, all right. So, did you say? that the sphere power was a plus 50. If you did, good job. Now the cylinder, this is where I think some are gonna, not everybody's gonna get the cylinder right. But when we turned it away, where did we land up? What came into focus was right about here, right? Minus one. So what is our cylinder? Is it a minus one? No, it's not. Remember, it doesn't equal where it lands. It equals the difference between the sphere and the cylinder. All right. So we were at a plus 50. Our cylinder came into focus at a minus one. What's the difference between the two? Well, remember, we came to a minus one. So the minus one to the zero is a one diopter difference. Up another half a diopter is a uh, total of 1.50 diopters and that's the power so it was a little tricky i did it intentionally so we would start in the plus and end in the negative but if you got that you're doing excellent all right now we're going to go look at one that is very common to do mistakes and that is our quarter cylinder 
Now, I have to give a little credit to a very good friend of mine, Stephen Crowley. He's the one that actually taught me this trick uh, years ago. And when he showed it to me, I, you know, before that, I was making mistakes left and right when it came to spotting quarter cylinder lenses. He showed me a trick that really, really helped. Now, a lot of people, when they spot lenses, uh, let me back up, let me pull this out. Let me put our minus one, minus one back in. You got a minus one lens, uh, a minus one sphere, minus one cylinder. Most people will set their cylinder at a minus one and not as far as when they're checking the power. Um, I said that backwards. What you want to be careful of is uh, setting it to the wrong power. Okay, so anyway, let me, it'll be easier if I just show you rather than trying to talk it through. So if we got a minus one, we're going to be really close if we just set our lens, our power jump to a minus one, right? It's very close. And because our cylinder is far away, it's another minus one. There's no real mistaking it, you know? Now, could we spin this lens and be here? We could, but notice it's our cylinder lines that are coming into focus, right? So that would be our first clue that, hey, we're gonna spot this wrong if we do this. We, of course, wanna see our sphere lines, which we do. And because our cylinder is far away, there's very, a less likely chance of us spotting this wrong still happens of course now the reason i say that is because when we put this quarter cylinder in it is so low power for that cylinder that it's very easy to spot this 90 degrees off okay so the power of this lens is a minus one minus 25. when we put this to a minus one even with finished lenses, there is a tolerance of power and sometimes it can be a little off. And so if you line up this lens thinking, okay, I set my sphere to where it should be and I wanna bring in my sphere lines, right, like this. Now, Notice when I'm turning it away, look what's happening. It's going blurry. I'm not seeing my cylinder lines come in. I'm actually having to go up to bring my cylinder lines into focus. This is the most common mistake that's made and it happens with quarter cylinders more than any other lens by far because the power difference is so low between the two meridians People are usually go, trying to go fast. They put the lens in. They're a little low on the power, not seeing, and they end up spotting it in cylinder instead of sphere. Even though it shows sphere, but because we can turn the dial drum toward us and we're seeing our cylinder lines come into focus, we know for sure this is wrong because we should be in, we should be seeing our sphere lines first. Right, so what needs to happen is this would need to be rotated 90 degrees. Now, when we come in, our sphere lines are showing up first, and as we turn it away, there's our cylinder lines. That's how it should be. Now, what I learned from my friend, Steve, is he said, when you come to your sphere power, always go a little higher, you know, meaning go higher in the plus, go up a little higher. So if we want a minus one cylinder or sphere, go a little bit higher, like a 0.75 or 0.87. The reason you do that is it helps to stretch out your sphere and really makes it easy to see the sphere lines distinguished from the cylinder lines. It's such a huge uh, tip that makes all the difference in the world. 
And if you do that and you keep spotting lenses, you know, grab a, you know, grab a stack of, uh, you know, a half dozen quarter cylinders and set your axis wheel to 180, let's say. Let me dial this down so I can see it. We're at about 180 and put your lens in. Set it at a minus one. Put your lens in. It's a little blurry. So what do we do? We want to back it off a little and boom, look how it stretches out our, our sphere lines. So much easier to see. Now we can lock our lens down, bring our sphere into sharp focus. We have to turn it, the power drum away to bring in our cylinder lines. And we know that we just got this spotted perfectly. Right, now we can spot our lens. Now, the last thing I wanted to show was a high cylinder. And just putting some of these lenses away so I don't mix them up. So this cylinder is a minus four. And I want to show you the difference of, you know, on all these other ones, because they've been a relatively low cylinder, I think the highest cylinder we've had so far was a 150. Uh, yeah, a minus one. That you can always still see the cylinder lines in the background when you're checking a sphere of power. So it makes it a little easier. But I want to show you what happens when you can't or when they're really hard to see. This is another common mistake uh, or where common mistakes can happen. Okay. As a side note, the more practice you do with a lens meter like this, you can actually, once you're locked onto the sphere power, based on the blur of the cylinder lines, you can actually read or determine the cylinder, the amount of cylinder in the lens without even having to read it. And that's something you will, that's a skill you will develop over time. All right, so I'm gonna put this lens in. I'm going to kind of get it into focus here, just so I can get started. All right. Now, when I'm looking at these cylinder, I'm sorry, at my sphere lines. There we go. They're in sharp focus, but notice that there is, you cannot tell where our cylinder lines are at. Right, and I can move this. I'm moving the lens up and down. I can do this, and I do not know where my cylinder lines are coming. And if I'm not careful, it will be very easy for me to spot vertical prism, unwanted vertical prism in this lens. So, to help that not happen, we want to turn the power drum away as we always do until our cylinder lines come into focus. Now, I mine are pretty close to center, which is good. Um, I just happen to get lucky on there, but a lot of times they're gonna be off, you know, like this. They're gonna be sitting too low or too high or too far to the left or to the right. And this is when, say I hit, this is how it comes out. I'm gonna wanna bring my lens to move it so it's in the middle. Don't spot it yet. Go back to your sphere power. Look, see how my sphere power is now off center? I wanna fix that too. Let me bring that over. Adjust my lens so my sphere lines are in the center. Go back to my cylinder lines. Now they're a little low. I wanna fix that, bring those up toward the middle. It's not uncommon to have to go back and forth, back and forth with some of the higher cylinder powers. And you know, when you get into a cylinder of minus 10 or 15 or even higher, this can be a real challenge, you know, and always, always lock the lens. You know, very often lower power lenses, everybody just kind of holds the lens, you know, adjusts them correctly, gets their, sets their access and spots the lens without ever locking the lens in. When you're doing high powers or high cylinders like this, always, always lock them in. So our cylinder looks good. Let me double check my sphere. 
my sphere looks better but I still would want to get it perfectly centered. That looks a little better. I also want to make sure that my lines are unbroken. Sometimes they get, you will rotate the lens slightly as you're adjusting it. So my sphere looks good. Let me double check my cylinder. My cylinder's still a little low. Let me try fixing that. Let me check my sphere. That looks that looks nice okay now i can spot my lens there is no unwanted horizontal prism there's no unwanted vertical vertical prism it's dead center sphere and cylinder but you see the importance of rocking back and forth especially with high cylinders low low cylinders low power lenses it's not as critical, it's still really important to do so, but because the low power, the target will not move in the reticle as much as it will on a high lens. All right, one last tip I wanna give you. When you are spotting lenses and you put your lens in and you dial the right power, you line it perfectly in the middle, and you spot your lens, take your lens out and look at your dots. And if it's a left lens, this will save a huge hassle when it comes to blocking. Sometimes your dots can be offset a little to the left, a little to the right. When that happens, if it's a left lens, your dot should go should be shifted more to the left. If it's a right lens, the dot should be shifted a little more to the right. The only exception to that is if it has negative decentration, which isn't, you know, it's not as common as your other. So it's a good rule of thumb. Um, or if you happen to see the decentration on your work ticket and it's negative and you know that they have to be decentered out, then uh, that would be the opposite. And you'll know that. But as a good rule of thumb, if it's a left lens, the dot should be on the left. If it's a right lens, the dot should be on the right. So if you spot a right lens and you line it up and you take it out and your dots are a little bit to the, that looks terrible. Let me do that again. You spot this right lens and your dots are clearly shifted to the left, even though you spotted it dead center, flip your lens and put your R on the top. That's a great tip that'll help to make sure that the lens is cut out and don't have issues at the blocker or the edger. Well, that concludes this video on how to spot and read sphero cylindrical lenses. I really appreciate you watching. I, I'm glad to hear from some of the comments uh, that these videos are being helpful. If you have any questions about some of the things I covered in this video or any others, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you there. Thanks again for watching.